Hi everybody. You know, I think that children are born scientists. The best scientists are actually are babies and toddlers. They ask obvious and essential questions like, what is this? Can I do this? Can I do it again? They repeat, they experiment. This is the essence of what a scientist does every day of, a, of their career. I think that people are naturally creative when they are born. It's an essential part of our evolution. But then something truly monumentally tragic happens. They go to school. Now I went to my son's school yesterday to have a look at some of their science textbooks and quite frankly I was horrified. Everything is introduced as a series of facts you need to remember for an exam. There are facts and facts and facts and accomplishments after accomplishments. And I suppose you need to know some of that. But in large part, these books are absolutely nothing to do with science. Science is not about facts and accomplishments. Science is about doubt. Science is taught to the test. So, a standardized test, that test will only test one thing, your short-term memory ability. People who pass tests like that have a neurological predisposition to remember and capture information in their prefrontal cortex, the working memory. But very creative people, people who think outside the box, may not have that ability to remember things in the short term. They will immediately be penalized in such a test. In this video, I want to show you what science is really like. And perhaps there's no better place to do that than a scientific congress. We're gonna go to the 48th Brazilian Geological Congress in Southern Brazil and listen to some geologists who are at the top of their game. You probably think that when geologists travel, they always travel into the field to study rocks. But I'm waking up in a city far away from home. It's a familiar situation for any scientist to be in. You've been to the field, you've done your lab work, you've got the data, and now you need to present that data to the world. Doubt and uncertainty are absolutely fundamental to science and are precisely the things which make science strong. We've been fooled by that kind of thing before. And in particular on Mars, uh, one of the examples is whether or not there's water on Mars today. Uh, the high-rise camera sees evidence of what appear to be flows on slopes. And there's some intriguing hints that those might in fact be due to liquid water flows uh, nowadays. We have a lot of questions about where that water might come from and 
whether or not we might be fooled by some other kind of phenomenon like carbon dioxide or uh, dust landslides. Uh, we make arguments for the presence of water and against the presence of water, and we just don't know the answer yet. Well, tell me a little bit about your research and uh, what you do. Nós trabalhamos com microfósseis. São microorganismos de tamanho microscópico, onde a gente tenta estabelecer as idades e os ambientes. O que a gente não sabe muito é de como esses animais viviam é, nos fundos dos oceanos e a gente está tentando descobrir qual é a química que eles utilizavam e qual é as respostas que eles dão para a descobrir como era o ambiente. Existem muitas coisas a ser descobertas e precisamos de inovações tecnológicas para atingir esses resultados. So, tell me about your area of research, Mary. What are you actually doing here? O que eu trouxe para cá foi uma, um estudo, né, partindo de uma premissa de que não existe sedimentação do Paleozoico, então não está batendo a tectônica e a sedimentação para a gente ter sedimentação Paleozoica. Eu, eu prezo muito por uma questão que filosoficamente a gente tem, tenta colocar como quebra de modelos. Né? Não adianta a gente trazer um modelo já pré-definido, pré-determinado, porque quando a gente faz isso, a gente procura, a gente às vezes tem um dado que mostra um caminho, mas a gente já está condicionado pelo modelo e tenta adaptar aqueles dados ao modelo que você está trazendo, quando deve ser o contrário. Ou a certeza de um modelo, ele vai refletir na negatividade da pesquisa. So tell me about your research and uh, what uh, you're presenting at this conference. At the moment I'm working mainly um, in a, a proposal of drilling in the equatorial Brazilian margin, uh, which is a big effort because I've never been drilled before for uh, Polysonographical studies. Uh, I have also a very uh, major interest in trying to understand how uh, magnetic properties uh, can record or might have a role in the climate change. We, we have to think that the, the deep sea is still like, a, like another world for us. We still ver don't know a lot of things of the deep sea. There is a, a completely new world that has to be discovered. Eu não sei ainda. We don't know uh, a lot of things and uh, we need to search more. A gente tem muitas teorias diferentes, pelo menos três, é uma incerteza muito grande ainda. So it might seem pretty weird to everybody watching, but all these scientists, they don't seem very sure of themselves. The scientist is actually actively looking for things which contradict their own ideas of the world. That's why they come to conferences like this. It's almost like a kind of a peer review process. They explain their work to their colleagues. The colleagues question it, criticize it. When an idea is attacked, it's like a filtering process. What's left at the end of that filtering process is much more likely to be true. So actually admitting what you don't know and inviting criticism makes science incredibly strong. And doing the opposite, saying to people that you do know something and not welcoming criticism, that means that your ideas are probably wrong. 
So, we're back in Recife. I hope you can see that doubt is actually a really positive thing. And I think that if we embrace it, our society will be more healthy, will be happier. Children will be happier during the learning process. If children at once learn that there is so much more still left to know, then they're much more likely to feel fascinated, encouraged to ask questions and be creative. We might shift away from this absolutely ridiculous system of being taught to the test and make education actually enjoyable. But it's not just that, it's also, for example, politics. Politicians need not worry about making U-turns. And the huge U-turn that you have made, uh, uh, the Shadow Chancellor was on saying it's, it's a massive victory for Labour. Mm -hmm. A U-turn is simply a course correction in government policy, but based on criticism and reflection. And that should be welcomed. The faster a government admits it made a mistake and takes a different course, then the better it is for everybody. So I think it's our job to continue to stimulate a questioning attitude in children for as long as possible. Obviously, my son's school is not unique in the world. Every school that I know of in every emerging and developed country teaches science in the same way. But I think that we parents can do something about that. We can lobby the government to change the way science is taught and we can also neutralize the negative effects of teaching to the test at home by making sure that they have a creative environment as possible. Whoa! Help! Help! Help me! Whoa! Whoa! Whoa!